divine. Nobody's walking. Nobody's talking. The time, the hour has come. This is a serious hour. That we need a word from the Lord. I need a word from the Lord on this morning. Our gracious Father, Lord in heaven, God, we come once again with a humble heart, oh God, giving you all the praise, giving you all the glory that you're so deserving of on this morning, God. Father, I thank you for one more chance to get it right, God. Thank you for forgiving me, oh God, in those areas where I stumbled and fell, oh God. Thank you for the blood that was shed on Catherine's cross, oh God. Over 2,000 years, oh God. That I may come boldly before the throne, oh God. Knowing that you're right there, oh God. To wash every one of my sins away, God. Now, fathers, I stand, oh God. At this sacred desk before your precious people, oh God. Declaring your word on this morning, God. Heal right now, God. Somebody has a disease, oh God, that needs to be cured today, God. Somebody have a mind that is troubled this morning. Somebody's heart is broken today, God. And Father, we need you, the healer, to come and see about us on today, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, stretch out your mighty hand today, God. Oh, God, touch us. Touch us right now, God. Father, if you do this, we'll be so careful, so thankful to give thy name all the praise and all the glory. Come on, put those blessed hands together. Come on, put Respond about 
What did the man of God talk about? It's important today. You didn't get up and put your fine clothes on. Put your best cologne on. Perfume. Just to come and be entertained. I am not an entertainer. I am not Michael Jackson. I am not Boosie Collins. I am not B.B. King. I just want to get your attention this morning. You can bother because God is real. God is real. Here's the word from the Lord. And the answer is yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me today. Go with me. Amen. We were in Isaiah last Sunday. Amen. Let's go back to Isaiah. Amen. Moving forward in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to the 52nd chapter. Amen. Today. The 52nd chapter of Isaiah. The house has already been addressed. God bless you on this morning. I appreciate you being here on this, the Lord's day. Amen. That he has allowed us to come together one more time. Isaiah 52, amen, and 12. Just one verse. Isaiah 52 and 12. I still hear some pages turning. Amen. I want you to read this with us on today. Amen. Isaiah 52 and 12, that one verse says, it says, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by Light. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. I want to talk to you for the next few minutes, amen, if you all would allow me. Look at your name and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, has God has your reward. Your reward. Come on, look at another name and say, neighbor. Don't be discouraged. God has a blessing for you. Come on, put those hands together and give it out some praise. I know many of you think, amen, that are here today, amen, and many that may be listening by whatever means that you're listening to us today, amen, that you think it is because of the President of the United States. Amen. That you're in the shape that you're in. Amen. Amen. But the Bible told us, and I'm so glad, amen, that the point was brought out yesterday, Mother Dandridge. Amen. But if my people, that if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and not only that, you got to turn from your wicked ways. Then when we hear from heaven and God said that he would what? Heal our land. When we look at the world all around us, we must recognize that many of our problems exist due to shattered and broken relationships. Am I in the house on today? What we have learned is that life is all about relationships. Who is your best friend? Who is your BFF? Who is your partner, your buddy? What, what, what we have learned is that life is about relationships. You can have a relationship with folks and get things that you never would have gotten if you didn't have 
a relationship. People are more prone to do things for you if there is a strong and solid relationship. Man that has friends must show himself first to be friendly. So in other words, if you don't have any friends, then it's possibly, amen, that you're just not a friendly person. Tell somebody, check yourself. Check yourself. Stop blaming somebody else. I've learned through the years that, amen, that as we, amen, interact with each other, that we interact with many people who are extremely antagonistic. Mm, that's one of those words, Brother Benny. In other words, there are several people who fight everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are sometimes they come in and out of even here. People that just fight everything. Yes, Jesus. Huh? Don't look at nobody. Amen. That's sitting beside you. Keep your eyes focused. Straight ahead. But do you know anybody like that? Have you come in contact with anybody? Amen. Seem like every time something is pronounced. No, I, I, I got, this is my reason why I don't think that that's right. No, the pastor got it wrong this time. I think the leaders of the church are off. When was the last time you've been to a prayer meeting? When was the last time you was at the Sunday night service? When was the last time you was at the midweek service? But you got an opinion on everything. Can I preach this morning just for a little while? You got some folks that fight everything. If it's not their idea, they fight it. If they didn't suggest it, they fight it. If it amen, if they're not in charge of it, they fight it. If they can't do what they want to do, they fight it. Got a whole lot of folks that are so antagonistic. Their spirit is contained. They fight to fight. They oppose. And they wonder why they don't have any friends. But if you want friends, Proverbs says, you got to be friendly. Isaiah's relationship with God is a relationship of trust. God could trust him. Ask your neighbor, can God trust you? Mm -hmm, that's the question I asked today. You see, trust is an element, amen, that secures, amen, and satisfies the relationship. I'm going to take my time. If I can trust you, I can keep you near me. If I can trust you, I can use you, Brother Deacons. If I can trust you, if I can't trust you, and I got to be blunt, I don't need you. Come on, some of us need to be real with some of our friends. Uh -huh. Some of those that you call your friends. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That when you have, think you have told them something in confidence, yes, before you get out of their presence, they've already texted somebody else and told them your confided. Yes, sir. All right. My yes, sir. God. You it's too long for me to single out all the great men and women of scripture that God could trust. Abraham had potential. But God had to get him out of his idolatry situation to show him a better way. He had to get him out of an idolatrous land. 
Because he knew that one, amen, once he got Abraham out of Ur, amen, out of the Chaldeans, amen, into Haran, amen, of Mesopotamia, amen, that he could trust him. You see, you see, there are some folks that hang around the wrong people. Mm -hmm. Some people are poison. And you work with them. And you ride in your automobile with them. And you live beside them. And you talk on the telephone with them. But I come to tell you, some of those people that you're in contact with ain't nothing but poison. Always down in things and complaining, amen, and fussing and murmuring, amen, about all that are going on. They are poison. You got to know how to let poison go in one ear and out the other. Uh -huh. And not let it harbor in your spirit. So God knew Abram had something to offer, but he had to get him out of a country that was filled with mess, filled with idolatry. And he said he had to get him away from near Kendrick so that he could get him in a place where God could be the one, amen, and the only one, amen, that he could be in touch with. God also knew Moses was a good man. But Moses had some baggage as well. When he got Moses by himself, he knew that he would give him a burning bush experience. An experience that God can only give to those who will trust him. Isaiah, Isaiah, amen, once again, he's an eagle eyed prophet. He's the one, amen, that is consumed of God. He sees through, amen, the telescope, amen, of the lens of faith, if you please. Yes, sir. God develops Israel. After a long battle of captivity and bondage. And Isaiah saw what you and I need to see. Amen. We see, amen, our present circumstances. Tell you what we see. We see where we are right now. But God sees deliverance. Am I in the house on today? We see those unpaid bills that seem like stacked higher than what we stand. Amen. But God sees all of our bills paid in full. I wish I could talk to somebody on today. Ask your neighbor, can you see today? Can you see? Amen. We see, we see, we see weakness. But God sees you strong. We see sickness. But God sees you healed completely. We see trouble. But I come to tell somebody, God see peace in the midst of that storm right now. I see peace in the midst of that troubling situation. We see a troubled son or daughter. But I tell you, God sees the future making of a missionary, a preacher, or a deacon. Good God of so God sees sometimes different than what we see. And we know that life is extremely repetitive. Full of ups and full of downs. Full of twists and full of turns. Let me take my time. Y'all want to push me this morning. You know when God when God delivers you out of one thing, yeah. it seems like all of a sudden something else yeah. happens. Yeah. As soon as God brings you 
out of one deliverer. Yes, sir. Then look like, amen, two or three will follow that one that you just came out of. Good God. So life is repetitive. And Israel, after all that God did for them, you would have thought that by now that possibly Israel would have, amen, realized that God for you is better than God against you. But Israel was an instrument to, amen, walk his people of a sinful life style. A contrast rebellion. And worst of all, the worship of false gods. If you really want to upset God, listen at me now. If you really want to make God upset, angry, disappointed, give God glory to another small G. Did y'all hear what I said? You start worshiping up another small G. Uh, if you really want to rub God the wrong way, serve a small G that don't exist. If you really want to get God angry with you, then forget about the God of our fathers. Good God of mine. I'm sorry, Confucius. You got to move over, Muhammad. Amen, because you came too late. A world that is no other. Because our God is a real God. You see, you see, God that you cannot see is, amen, no God at all. A God that you can see is not a God at all. A God who can't hear is not a God at all. A God who can't help you. In a time of struggle, I come to let you know it's not a God at all. For I need a God that when I am in trouble, I can depend on him. Uh -huh. I need a God, amen, that I know will be there. That will hide me in a time of trouble. I in his pavilion. Will it hide me? Oh, I wish I had a witness in the house. I need a God that will be my refuge. Uh-huh. That will be my strength. A very present help in trouble. I need, I need a God that when my head is hurt and when my head is low, I can lift my eyes unto the hills from which coming my help. Good God Almighty. Because all of my help comes from the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the kind of God that I'm in need of. And Isaiah knew that this God was a real God. That before you call him, he's already asking you missionary. Somehow I would say yes. Well, what I really want to leave with you today doesn't matter how long you've been in the storm and the winds have been blowing on your life. That after the storm clouds have passed over, the songwriter said that everything, let me say everything. And sell the devil's dust like a good hard rain of the anointing Holy Ghost. Good God of my nothing can sell the devil's dust like the glory of God like that was felt in this house on yesterday at the prime breakfast when men and women were coming together to give God glory and lifting him up letting him know that it is because of him good God Almighty as long as the power of God is present then it settles the devil's dust are y'all praying for me today you see God let Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and he led them by a pillar of fire at night. And when the enemy attempted to shake up Israel from the rear, 
attempted to sneak up on Israel from behind. God wanted his people to know that not only will I be with you in the front of the battle, not only will I lead you in front, not only will I be there, go before you to fight your battle. In other words, I see the weapons that are coming against you. I see the weapons that have been formed against you. I see all the enemies that are hiding in the caves. I see those enemies that are hiding in the mountains. I see those attacks that they're plotting and planning against you right now. I see those folks that you work with on your job in the break room.
God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.